in this module we are going to see how we can use a similar technique to overcome the second problem with the use of embryonic stem cells it is how we can make customized stem cells so they don't cause an immune rejection i'm sure you have all heard about cloning an animal basically it is the same technique so a fertilized egg we'll take a fertilized egg remove the genetic material and introduce genetic material of the donor so let's see that so here's the technique which is used basically to clone an animal the first animal of course we know that was cloned was dolly the sheep so here we have two individuals one is a black faced sheep which is going to donate an egg fertilized egg so that fertilized egg will we will remove the nucleus from this fertilized egg so it will become enucleated cell enucleated fertilized egg cell we will take another cell from body of an adult adult sheep uh, in this case the our donor has a black face so it is a black faced sheep so the cell the somatic cell or cell from a different part of body we are going to take is from white faced sheep so unfertilized egg will be fused with this somatic cell now resulting cell will have the cytoplasm of fertilized egg which has the information about creating a new individual so after these two cells have been fused this whole complex of fusion of two cells is going to act like a fertilized egg although the cytoplasm is from the fertilized egg however the nucleus is coming from a normal somatic cell so this fused egg cell will be allowed to divide and form an embryo at a early stage this embryo will be implanted into the donor the donor again happens to be a black faced sheep a different one or the same one won't matter however the lamb that is going to be produced out of this fusion of these two cells is going to have the same genetic makeup as the donor of the nucleus or the donor of the somatic cell in our case it was a white faced sheep so i suppose you can see this that this lamb has a white face and the reason is that the genetic material present in the fertilized egg came from white faced sheep so basically we are going to use the same technique to make customized embryonic stem cells here is a human cell fertilized human egg cell the dna of the cell will be removed we have removed the dna or the nucleus of the cell nucleus from a cell of a patient is taken that is removed and is injected into the fertilized egg enucleated egg fertilized egg and the once that happens the genetic material present in this nucleus will realize that it is in an environment which is telling it to divide and form an embryo so the cell is not going to be allowed to develop into an embryo of course that is highly unethical and illegal to clone a person so once this cell divides several times now the cells from this embryo will be taken and plated in a dish in a tissue culture dish these cells will act or behave like embryonic stem cells now remember we have said that embryonic stem cells have two very remarkable abilities that they can they have unlimited ability to divide as opposed to adult stem cells which have relatively limited ability to divide secondly these embryonic stem cells can be differentiated into almost any type of cell in the body say for example heart cells spinal cord cells insulin producing cells neurons even the red blood cells i would like to mention that differentiating adult stem cells into neurons or the insulin producing cell is rather very very challenging and attempts to do this have not been very successful once the customized stem cells have been made embryonic stem cells have been made they can be now used to repair different tissues that have been damaged so now i would like to show you a technique how the nuclear transfer works so let's look at an animation which shows you how a, uh, first of all we generate enucleated fertilized egg cells and then how a nucleus is injected into the cell i hope this looks familiar to you here's a holding pipette holding a fertilized egg cell this is again the zona pellucida first of all we are going to drill a hole in it this time with a pipette rather than a laser so let's see 
Holding pipette again has a negative pressure. It is holding on to the cell of interest and our pipette, the other pipette is going to first of all drill a hole in it. It is going to drill a hole in the zona pellucida. So it is going to take little, remove little bits and pieces of zona pellucida in order to make a hole room for it to go in all the way in. So this is process is going to repeat itself till the gap large enough. Now the pipette will go in and it will remove the nucleus of the cell. Here comes the nucleus. You can see this nucleus in the pipette. It will be removed. So now what we have is a enucleated fertilized egg in which nucleus from a different person or different animal can be injected and this fertilized egg will behave as if it is a fertilized egg which it should be and it will basically result in formation of embryo. So here the, the pipette is going to go in. First of all it's going to uh, go in and also you can see here is the nucleus it's going to go in and inject this nucleus into the cell. So there you go. So this process can be used to either clone an animal or it can also be used to make customized embryonic stem cells. So we have effectively solved all the problems associated with use of embryonic stem cells. I would like to mention here that things that work beautifully in theory don't always work beautifully in practice. So of course this is, uh, I made many generalizations when I was describing this process. However, people have been able to successfully use these procedures to customize embryonic stem cells.